Hey peeps and welcome to Syntho and in this video I'm going to show you how you can take your acid bass lines from being very amateur and dry to sounding super juicy and professional just like this. So you can hear how much thicker, more juicy it is, how much more movement there is and variation and just how much more interesting it sounds. So there's gonna be a lot of thought processes and tips and tricks that you can learn in this video that then you can hopefully apply to many other different styles as well. But if you are especially into acid house, and making acid bass lines and injecting some of that into your track, then you are going to learn a lot from this video. So enjoy it, guys. So the first tip I'm going to give you is about varying your acid bass line patterns so that there's contrast and there's variation throughout the track and not just the same sequence over and over and over, which would get quite boring. So if we open up our 303 plugin, in this case, I'm using ABL3 which is really, really nice. So basically within ABL3, you can choose this pattern mode here and you can create a sequence like this and you can do 16 steps, eight steps, 32 steps and so on. So what I've done is I've created multiple 16 step patterns, each with slightly different slides, slightly different notes, accents and so on and so forth. So to make it easier to vary your patterns, what you can do is you can start with your first pattern here you can right click on here and click copy pattern. Then if we move over to a blank pattern here, so obviously I'm not using number five here, so it's just defaulted. I can then right click and paste it in here. So now that's taken my first pattern and put it into number five here. Now I can do all these different variations to it, make it sound slightly different, add little fills in, whatever. Then I can move on to number six, copy it over again, and create a variation and just go on and on and on as many times as you like. So how do we actually go about playing these patterns in arrangement view here? Well, it's really quite simple. You need to create a MIDI clip and then each MIDI key here is actually gonna trigger a different pattern. So if I made that last, this whole section here, then it's going to just repeat that same pattern over and over and over again. But as you can see, I've played these different lengths of MIDI notes in here according to when I want the next pattern to start. Just like you would if you were playing a melody on a keyboard. Each note is gonna trigger a different pattern. So when I play it now, you can hear the variations going on on each different note. So there's a few things you need to bear in mind. The main thing really is when you're creating these different patterns is just to make sure that the notes are all within the same scale so that they gel together musically. But apart from that, just experiment with different slides, different accents and different notes within that scale. So you can create variation between these different patterns, which is just gonna make it so much more interesting for the listener. So already at this point now, your acid bass lines are gonna stand out because they're gonna be a lot more interesting and they're gonna have variations, which is just gonna make the track sound so much cooler. So moving on, how can you start to make this acid bass sound a lot more juicy and a lot more professional? So my first step would be to add some parallel compression and saturation slash distortion. So there's gonna be quite a few different plugins here and you can sort of pick and choose which ones you like and then apply them to the plugins that you have if you don't have the ones that I'm gonna show you. But I recommend using these ones because I find they're just the most effective at getting a pro sound. So I've got this audio effect rack here called Acid Beast and we're gonna go through each stage one by one. So in terms of saturation, distortion and parallel compression, first what I would recommend you do is use some sort of tape emulation plugin. Now I know these are a little bit more expensive and a little bit complicated, but if you're into your analog sort of sound and you like stuff to sound warm, crunchy and fat, then a tape plugin is really what you need. And there's so many different ones. 
I've got loads of them. I've got ones from UHE. I've got ones from IK Multimedia. And for a while now, I've been using the UAD ones, which I find are probably the best. So if you don't have a tape plugin and you don't want to buy one, then this can also be done on Ableton Saturator. It's just if you really want to get down to the details, then the tape plugin can probably do it better. So let's just AB this tape and see what it's doing to the sound of the acid bass. Can you hear how much thicker it's making the sound and how much more squashed it's making it? So it's kind of reducing the dynamic range a little bit and just making it sound a lot tighter and a lot beefier. Now we can push this tape even more, but it's good to start it at the start of your chain in just quite a subtle way and that's gonna really help create a great foundation for your acid bass. But let's push it a little bit further so you can get an idea if you wanna overdrive it even more. So around 70 works great and it's just as I say adding a little bit of grit not too much and a little bit of compression and that's what tape does really well and I like it at the start of the chain because it's just going to help support everything else that I add from now on. So now moving on to a bit more obvious saturation we can just use Ableton's saturator just to add a little bit more grit and make it sound a little bit more aggressive and not so dry. <laughs> This is very subtle, but we can push it even more if we want. It just depends on how saturated and how heavy you want your acid base to sound. I like using the saturator in quite soft amounts, so that's what I've done here. Again, this is just making it sound a little bit more alive and a little bit more analog. So then there's an even more extreme option if you want to distort your acid bass, and that is using the Ableton pedal, which is a fantastic sounding plugin. We just turn that on and listen to the difference already. <laughs> want to get really heavy and aggressive then that is the plugin to put on your acid base. So then to put the final cherry on top when you are saturating an acid base I would recommend setting up a parallel compression return channel. So what this is is it is just a return channel with the acid bass line fed into it at max. So as you can see here I've got return channel B and my acid base is being fed into that. Now what have I got on this return channel? What I've got is an 1176 style compressor. Now, as I say, if you don't have this, then you can use Ableton's glue compressor or Ableton's stock normal compressor. But as I say, if you've got like a colorful analog style compressor like the 1176, then this is gonna work really well. So let's just take a very detailed listen to what's going on. <laughs> So I don't know if you could hear that there, but there's a little bit of like subtle saturation and compression going on kind of really underneath the bass line. Let me turn up this return channel so you can get a better feel. Again, you can be as subtle or as extreme as you want with this. I find somewhere around probably minus 10 is going to do the job nicely. 
So let's just take a listen to this return channel in solo so you can get a feel for what's actually going on. So you can hear it's a little bit more of saturation again, but this time it's got a bit of a compression going on. So there's a bit of movement now, a little bit of pumping, because what I have done is I've really overdriven this compressor. So it's absolutely squashing the acid base to death. And then that is just going to sit underneath our dry acid base line. And the two are going to run in parallel, hence the term parallel compression. So what you get is you get the nice consistent dry signal and then you get the parallel channel, which is just going to sit underneath it. And the two are going to work really well together and create a really thick pumping sound. Join the next generation of house music creators with Syntho. It's time to take your music production to the next level. We've got everything from in-depth beginners courses to advanced mixing techniques. Syntho is your all-encompassing music education platform. Learn from some of the hottest world touring DJs. It's your chance to unlock house music secrets from industry professionals. Get one-on-one -on -one feedback on your music with Syntho's bespoke feedback system. These guys are biased for your track. They will tell you what you need and when you need it. Use this to make fully finished tracks to send to labels and artists. It's now time for you to reach for the labels of your dreams. Get access to your favorite artists, tailored learning paths, and learn anytime. Head to our website now and turn your house music dreams into a reality. And just to take this a little bit further, if you want to get a little bit more atmospheric, then what you can do is you can put a reverb before this compressor, like so. And it's going to add this really cool, gritty texture underneath your acid base. What this also does is it overall helps the acid bass line pump and stand out of the mix more because you've got that super compressed channel that is just going to help it sound a lot louder without actually just having to turn up the acid bass itself. So up to now, if we play our acid bass with the rest of our track, it's sounding pretty nice. <laughs> But we're not quite there yet and there's a few more steps that we're going to use to take it to that very top level. So what we're going to look at now is some juicy effects such as chorus, echo and reverb. So let's take a look at some reverb to start with. So the aim of the game here is just to get a nice subtle reverb that adds a nice spacey feeling to this acid bass. So I've got a return channel down here and I've got Valhalla Vintage Verb set up. So let's take a listen to what that sounds like. Just giving it that bit of that warehouse feel, making it feel like it's in some sort of big hall or room. So really what you want is you want quite a short reverb really, just because you don't want the tail to kind of blur too much and to make it sound mushy. So stick with quite a short reverb. And then what you want to do quite crucially is you want to EQ this reverb so a lot of the bottom end is taken out so that doesn't interfere with the low frequencies of our track. So to do that on Valhalla Vintage Verb, there's a simple EQ cut here. So I can take this from being at 10 hertz, and being really heavy, up to something like 900. Can you feel how much lighter the reverb is now? We can push it even further if you want. And that's how you get a really clean reverb that works great on a bass line. So obviously these techniques can be applied to any reverb as well. Valhalla Vintage Verb has just got a beautiful lush sound. So there's a few different things we can experiment now. We can change the size. So 
the different textures and also the mode here. And as I say, these are all just going to give this acid bass a little bit of life and just take it to that next level and make it sound a little bit more professional. So moving on, what I like to do is to add that extra groove to your acid bass is use a little bit of some type of echo. Now it can be quite hard to get this echo just right, but when you do, I think it sounds really effective. Let's take a listen to what this echo I've put on is doing. <laughs> So I'm using Echo Boy for this and what I've got is a nice 1 8 dotted note, quite a low feedback and quite a low mix. Now if we start to push this mix up to somewhere around 50% like you might usually have it and the feedback around medium as well, then it's just going to get a little bit too overpowering and take away from the groove of the bass. <laughs> As you can hear there. So if you stick for something quite subtle, it's just going to sit in the background and help it groove. And other notes that I find work when you're working at this tempo and this sort of energy is something like a 16th note. And maybe even with less mix. So we're getting to quite a cool acid bass sound now. So now let's add some juicy chorus. So I think it sounds absolutely so thick and juicy. So I'm using Chorus 65 for this, which is a really nice chorus plugin, but obviously you can use Ableton's Chorus if you want. Still sounds good, but this is a lot quicker and a lot more instant wow factor. Right guys, so the final piece of the puzzle that's gonna really help take your acid bass lines to that next professional level is using some automation. So we've got a pretty cool sounding bass now, but we really need it to vary throughout the track and have some sort of movement. So that is where automation comes into play. So to start off with, you wanna automate the actual 303 plugin or any other synth that you're using to create your acid bass. So there's loads of different parameters on here we can take a look at. So let's go through them one by one. What I'm doing is, as you can see throughout this track here, I'm starting off by modulating or automating the ABL3 filter cutoff here. Then I'm doing the envelope mod, the decay and the resonance. So if we just basically, in case you don't know, let's just play around with them live. Those ones I just showed you so you can get a feel for what each one of them is gonna do. Okay, so you could hear all that movement going on there and that was just me doing it with my mouse. But what I've done actually in this track is as you can see, I've created these different variations and different build up moments and ups and downs. And that is really what's gonna give you a lot of movement. And especially when it's this kind of repeating acid baseline pattern, that's gonna really help 
just drive the track forward and keep it really interesting. So that's one part of automation that you can do to this acid base. But I've also put in a lot more on the different Ableton and plugin devices which I've used to affect this acid base. So as you can see at the start of the track, the bass line has had the low end taken out and this is done using an auto filter here. So playing around with this filter frequency, taking the low end out, is just going to really help contrast different sections. So as you can see, I had it there at the beginning, but then also throughout the track, for example, here, I just bring the low end out again using that same auto filter and then bang, it comes back in again. So what I like to do as well to add like a super cool impact to when the bass comes back in or when something drops is, I like to do a little tiny filter sweep as you can see here. So typically you might think to do something like this. You might think to just have the frequency all the way up right until the next note comes in like that here, which sounds cool. But can you hear the filter come off? bang on the first beat of that kick. What I like to do is something a little bit more natural. You can add like a little sweep just before the first kicks comes in and then take a listen to how different that sounds. Just sounds a lot more natural. And this is the sweep here I'm talking about. So if we accentuate that, it would sound like a slow sweep. But when it's really short and really snappy, it kind of adds this like, zoom noise and it's just a little detail that really adds that little bit of extra ear candy and i'm going to show you how i did that with the volume automation later as well so now let's take a look at what i've done in this breakdown so when the breakdown happens we've got some more automation going on so to start with i've automated the send to that reverb that we were looking at earlier so as you can see that starts to rise here so what I'll do is I'll show you what else I've done and then we'll listen to the breakdown together. So next thing is that delay that I've got on my acid channel, the Echo Boy delay, I've increased the mix and the feedback control here as well. So in this breakdown, we're getting a build of tension and different parameters are being built up. Pretty standard stuff, but it works especially well for these acid bass lines. Then to finish off, what I've done is on the very last pattern of this breakdown here on this acid bass, I basically just cut the volume out and then like the filter, I've done a little sweep upwards of the volume here to create that little zoom sound that I was talking about before, that little bit of extra ear candy. So just remember this, instead of having the parameters come on and off, completely bang onto the beat, try dragging that automation a little bit before and creating a little sweep and you're gonna be surprised at some really cool sort of swelling effects you can get that just add that extra oomph to the drops. So now let's take a listen to this breakdown and see if you can hear what's going on with this automation. So pretty cool, and as you could hear, I'd also taken those ABL3 cutoff resonance and envelope mod parameters and sort of taken them down a little bit just to quiet the track down and kind of build up the tension again. So guys, that concludes our video on how to take your acid bass lines to the next level. So I hope you've enjoyed seeing the step-by-step -step process and how the acid bass lines started and how it ended and being hopefully, I think, a lot more juicy a lot more powerful and a lot more professional. So guys, I hope you have fun creating some really cool acid bass lines and I hope you've learned something from these techniques in this video. As always, give me a shout if you've got any questions on this subject and I will see you on the next video. Take care everyone.